What's up guys, it's Endymion, and today I want to explore a theory surrounding the concept of the Paragon and Renegade system within Mass Effect. This video might be a bit weird, but this is me we're talking about, so this is nothing new. Let's be real. Obviously spoilers for the Mass Effect universe, and if you love Mass Effect, consider liking and subscribing, sharing, all that social media garbage. I hate asking people to do this stuff, it's awkward for me, but this is YouTube. Anyway, now that that's out of the way, let's begin. The theory today stems from the in-game systems of Paragon and Renegade. As we all know, the dialogue system within Mass Effect allows players to choose choices that influence the game's narrative and world. I mean, this is a staple of a Bioware game, of course. And choosing a Paragon action will lead to more diplomatic and sincere outcomes, whereas Renegade is the badass choices where things usually blow up, people die, and Shepard gets to be a ruthless executioner. Strangely enough, your access to the actual Paragon and Renegade talents in Mass Effect 1, however, don't actually become fully available until after the initial mission in Eden Prime. Why is that? I actually replayed the beginning of the game again just to make sure I wasn't crazy and here's a screenshot of my Shepard in the beginning and yeah, no Paragon or Renegade talents are available until after Eden Prime. I mean, Charm and Intimidate are there, yes, but the actual more powerful versions that become Paragon and Renegade aren't. So what's the theory, I hear you asking? Well, there's a popular theory amongst fans, mostly on Reddit, that Shepard's ability to truly influence the people they meet might be a side effect of the Protheum Beacon Shepard comes into contact with on Eden Prime. This rabbit hole is going to be a little deep, but just sit tight and let me explain. So we know that the Protheum Beacon was created by, well, the Protheans, and the Protheans were the most technologically advanced galactic empire the Milky Way has ever known in terms of scope besides the Leviathans made. Of course, there could have been stronger empires millennia ago, but we just simply don't know that. The Protheum Beacon rewrites Shepard's brain in a sense and implants the infamous scene of guts and robotics and the prophetic vision of the Reapers imminent return. But once Shepard is imprinted, their powers of charm and intimidate suddenly become Paragon and Renegade. And this is where the theory gets interesting. What if the ability to influence people within the game of Mass Effect was because the Prothean Beacon, in a sense, gave Commander Shepard their own form of quantum communication, a sort of organic indoctrination of others. Stay with me on this one, trust me. Another big interesting thing is that one of the powers within Mass Effect 3 is a skill called Dominate. It's basically AI hacking, but instead of being able to affect synthetics, it's for organic enemies instead. And Shepard obtains the use of Dominate after directly discovering and having their mind be controlled by the very things that inadvertently created the Reapers in the first place the Leviathans. And this power of Dominate is quite literally a power that allows Shepard to indoctrinate and control the minds of other organic beings, like how a Leviathan would their thralls. And we know that the Leviathans are able to indoctrinate and control the minds of other organics via their artifacts, which are so advanced they could be seen almost as magic to the races of the Milky Way because there's something no organic really has the ability or technical know-how of how it works really. So taking the information of Shepard being able to use Dominate once they meet the Leviathans, which allows them to indoctrinate others in combat, and looking at how Shepard gains the advanced abilities within the Paragon and Renegade trees once they interface with the Protheum Beacon, it finally leads me to the core and reveal of the theory. What if Commander Shepard had the power of indoctrination the entire time, and because of the Beacon and the Leviathans, Shepard was, in a sense, able to influence and indoctrinate the various other characters in the trilogy because Shepard was quite literally, through gameplay, indoctrinating the other characters. It's a sort of meta way of explaining why Shepard is able to overcome such possible situations and come to conclusions where things seem almost near impossible to achieve 
by ordinary human capabilities. Things like saving the planet of Rannoch and uniting the Quarians and Geth, or convincing Rex to help you on Vermeer. Let me give you another example that is pretty wild with this theory in mind. Remember in Mass Effect 2 when you're helping Samara, the Asari Justicar, on her loyalty mission and it's all about stopping Samara's daughter Morneth, who's an Ardat Yakshi, from killing people? So we're told that Ardats are so powerful that their ability to influence and basically indoctrinate others is near impossible to withstand. And this power is why Ardots are so dangerous. Because they indoctrinate their prey like a Leviathan and then destroy the victim's minds and become even more powerful themselves. However, when Commander Shepard is sitting in Morneth's apartment as bait for Samara, Morneth literally begins to exact her indoctrinating will on Shepard, and we, as Shepard, are able to break her hold on us and push her power back, breaking the connection. And we need to remember that Morneth was one of the most powerful Ardots of her time, having done this whole murderous rampage shtick for over a hundred years at least, so her will and power would be insanely strong at this point. But Shepard just severs the connection. There's only two reasons why this would be possible for Shepard to do. One is that Shepard is just too badass to be controlled, which I mean true, but I think it's more so that my second reasoning would be that Shepard was not able to be indoctrinated by Mornith because Shepard themselves has a power in the similar spectrum of the Ardot Yakshi in terms of indoctrination. Not necessarily having, you know, brain SCX with someone and causing them to die, but you know. When you really think about it, the only time Shepard is not in control of themselves in the entire trilogy, to my memory anyway, is two times. The first is when you meet the Leviathans, they are able to force their will and project themselves into Shepard's mind. The other is near the end, when the elusive man is able to indoctrinate Shepard just enough into shooting Anderson in the stomach, which makes me sad to this day that you can't resist that. Both examples are moments in Mass Effect where Shepard is faced with someone who is incredibly powerful in the ways of quantum communication. But think about it, even the Rachni Queen can't indoctrinate Shepard, neither can the Thorian or the myriad of times Shepard comes into contact with Reaper artifacts, Leviathan artifacts, or literal Reapers themselves. Shepard is able to keep their minds straight and sound through each and every one of these encounters. And the answer to these is that Shepard's mind is enlightened by the Prothean Beacon and likely the Leviathans themselves. We know that the Leviathans have been silently watching the fate of the galaxy unfold with little to no intervention, but maybe in hindsight, the Leviathans have been helping Shepard all along. Of course, this would make some people believe that Shepard's victories were not on their own accord, but I disagree with this. Shepard's victories over the Elusive Man, Kylang, the Reapers, Cerberus, and so on were achieved by Shepard and their crew. It was the combined efforts of individuals like Garrus, Liara, Tally, and Rex, to name just a few, that helped Shepard save the galaxy in the end. Mass Effect was never about the achievements of a single individual, but the cooperation of billions of individuals fighting for a common goal in the form of the Reapers. And maybe the Leviathans helped Shepard without them even knowing, because when Shepard comes into contact with Sovereign, they are able to keep a clear mind. Same with Harbinger, same when they're on the Collector's ship and so on. Maybe Shepard really does have a indoctrination superpower, for the lack of a better word. And the impossible scenarios that Shepard is able to solve are because Shepard's mind and will are enhanced due to the beacon and the Leviathans. I think Shepard's mind still would have broke and become enthralled to the Reapers, but Saren was literally living inside of Sovereign. Which, I mean, at that point, what do you expect when you are quite literally in the belly of the beast itself. Of course, the power of Dominate and the Paragon Renegade abilities could be chalked up as non-canon, just video gamey stuff Bioware wanted to add to the game, but I like to think it's more than that. The Shepard at the beginning of Eden Prime to the end of that mission are two very different individuals. You enter Eden Prime as the commander, but you leave Eden Prime as the galaxy's best hope for survival, and I think that's powerful. Well guys, that's a video on Commander Shepard's superpower, I guess. What do you think? Is there any weight to this theory? 
or is it just video gamey stuff? Let me know in the comments. And if you like the video, I got more on the channel. Please like, comment, subscribe, and all that nonsense, and share the video if you wanna. That would be cool. Yeah, this is never not going to be awkward to ask for viewers, but yeah. And if I don't release a video in the next day or two, it's cause there was a family tragedy that happened recently to me, and me making this video right now was pretty hard to do, all things considered, but I'm, I'm going to keep pushing no matter what, because I just love doing this. So thanks for watching. I'm Endymion, and I'll see you in the next one.